What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Summer Career Mode. This is episode number four and we start today's just off with a look at our for September. As you can see, Spurs at home, Liverpool at Anfield and then Graham Potter's Brighton in a Crystal Palace Brighton rivalry plus Preston in the EFL Cup fourth round as well. So some more tough fixtures coming for Crystal Palace here. Tough starts of the season for us in terms of the fixtures we've got. And also as transfer deadline day ended in the last episode, we made a signing on deadline day. Max Aaron's coming in from Norwich City. We had a bit for a Brecci Ize, second one of the window, both of course turned down. So yeah, Ize will be staying with us. And I've got to say, to start the season off, quite realistic so far. We've got two big injuries, Ducore and Mitchell, uh, both getting two and respectively three month injuries as well. So quite realistic to have a couple of early knocks to start the season off as well. Often happens after pre-season. And also as well the signings too. Three of our four signings are players that Palace signed in real life. Ducore in from RC Lons for 18 mil, the exact same fee Palace played in real life. Ebi Yoi coming in from Derby County. The youngster getting signed from the rounds in the summer. And also as well, Sam Johnston coming in from West Brom as our backup for Geiter as well. The only player the Palace haven't signed in real life is of course Max Ahrens. But again, I didn't think that was too unrealistic at all. Uh, Max Ahrens relegated two times in the past three years with Norwich City in the Premier League. And when you look at the talent that Norwich have had over the years, really good young talent developed at Carrow Road. Emmy Buendia, Jamal Lewis and Ben Godfrey. All of those players have left in the past few years. And the teams they've gone to, mid-table Premier League side. When Diaz now at Aston Villa, Godfrey's now at Everton, and Lewis is at Newcastle United as well. So yeah, I, I think that was quite a realistic sign in that one as well for our long-term success for Joel Ward and also Nathaniel Klein as well. So I was happy with that deal there. I didn't think it was beyond the realms of possibility at all. Even so, for the first game of today's episode, the first of four in today's episode here, uh, we take on Spurs, Antonio Conte Spurs. Now, here's a prediction from me to you for the upcoming season. Now, obviously... <laughs> Take this with a pinch of salt and Spurs fans, I don't want to get your hopes up too much here, but here's my prediction for the summer. Now, I often make predictions in the summer and they often don't come true. You know, every now and then I might hit the lottery and get a prediction right, but often they don't come true. But my prediction for the summer, Spurs fans, you're waiting for this? I think they're going to win a major honour next season. I do. I think Spurs are going to win a major honour next season. I really do believe it. Yes, it has been a trophy drought for Spurs for quite a while now. We'll see a couple of years ago there in the EFL Cup final. Uh, I think, I really do. I, I don't like to give too many predictions because, as you know, I normally get them horribly wrong and I've got egg on my face. But I do want to have a prediction for this season and uh, one which I want you guys to hold me to is this one. I think Spurs are going to win a major trophy next season. What it is, I don't know, but I think they are going to win one one and I uh, win one. Sorry, and I think it will be. I, I, well, it could be it could be any of the four, really, but I do believe that Conte is going to end the trophy drought. I don't know which one it's going to be out of the four. Obviously, they're in the Champions League for next season. Um, there's obviously a uh, possibility they could drop into the Europa League to finish in third. When we wait for the group stage, we'll see what draw they've got. Um, obviously, there'll be the EFL Cup and FA Cup up for grabs as well. And then, of course, the Premier League as well, which would, of course, be an incredible feat if Spurs could win their first ever Premier League. I think they'll win one of the four. I can't tell you which one it will be, but I think they'll win one of the four. They've had a few finals over the past few years, including a Champions League final under Mauricio Pochettino as well. But I'm a huge fan of Conte. I really, really am. I'm a massive fan of his really ruthless display as well. I, I really do feel as though... I know there were some rocky moments last season when he first arrived. He was very unhappy with the state of the team was in. But I, I really do feel that they're going to win something this year. Now, we drew with Spurs that game 2-2. Two, two. I was very happy with the draw as well. We battled back from 2-0 down to make it 2-2. Two, two. Wilfred Zaha, what a solo goal to level it in a 2-2 two, two draw. And I'll take that as well. Tough start to the season, only one win in four. But a point there against Spurs ain't bad at all. I'll have that. But even so, yeah, I, I really do feel as I uh, changed Joel Ward's position from right back to centre half. He grew two ratings here. Again, I said with Palace, they've got they've got quite a few fullbacks, quite a few midfielders, but not a lot of centre halves here. But they're players that can play centre half like Koyate, Riedeval could fit in there, and also uh, now Joel Ward as well. But um, yeah, my prediction for this season, I might even do a predictions video, you know, because I like discussing football with you guys. Um, I, I just, I feel it. I really do. Spurs fans, take this with a pinch of salt, but I really do feel Spurs' trophy drought is going to come to an end next season. What it is, I don't know, but guys, hold it, hold it, hold it against me if they don't win it. But I, I think, I think they'll win something. I really do. I can see them winning an, an EFL Cup. Or I can, I can just visualize it with Conte lifting the trophy and Harry Kane finally winning that major honor for Spurs and um, that decision to stay in the end would pay off.
Even so, for the second game of today's episode, speaking of winning trophies, well, last season they won a domestic cup double. Liverpool uh, obviously winning the FA Cup and the EFL Cup, both against Chelsea, both on penalty shootouts, both after nil nils. Crazy how that worked out. But Liverpool, of course, last season they were going for that historic, unprecedented uh, quadruple in the end. They fell short with Man City winning the Premier League title on the final day with that incredible comeback against Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa. And then, of course, in the Challenge League final, losing to Real Madrid. It was marred, though, wasn't it? It was marred by by the off the pitch, um, I should say off the pitch, outside the stadium uh, drama, if you will, at the Stade de France. Such a shame, you know, because it, it overshadowed a final between two teams that have met before a few years ago, uh, obviously two of the best teams in the world. It really overshadowed what could have been a classic of a final. Day. It was such a shame what happened. I felt so sorry for the fans that were involved in the security issues. But taking on Liverpool here, uh, obviously away against Anfield. I mean, it's not it's not a uh, it's not a far fetched prediction to say that these guys will probably win a trophy next season as well. Obviously, winning a domestic double last season, Liverpool. Uh, taking them on away at Anfield. We fell behind early and then Bobby Firmino got their second to make it 2-0. 2-0 down and it looks like we're going to have yet another defeat and a, a tough start to the season will continue. Once again, this is just like the Chelsea game really. You know, I'm away from home against one of the big boys in the Premier League and I, I struggled to get going. It took me a long time before I did. I think the thing that was really playing on my mind though was Wilfred Zaha's early injury. Yeah, Zaha of course scored the leveller against Spurs. He's one of our best players in the team. He's our highest straight to player in the team and when he got that early injury I was thinking not again I and mean, we've already seen Ducore go down with dislocated shoulder Tarek Mitchell with a broken toe and now we've got Wilfred Zaha who did soldier on but I knew he was going to run off the injury we left it late to get the chances eventually we did get one great one though through Will Hughes and the former Hornet did half the deficit unfortunately that's all it proved to be just a consolation yet another defeat but again really tough start there you know away against Liverpool at Anfield obviously Bobby Firmino scoring both goals. It's quite an open game to be fair but Liverpool were the better side and another defeat what's been a really tough start. Five games to begin the campaign in the Premier League we've only won one of them and another broken toe. Yeah, just like Tyrek Mitchell Wilfred Zaha broke his toe at Anfield he's done for three months as well and that's our third injury to a first team starter already and he is of course our best player as well so this has been a really tough start for Crystal Palace but I like it. I really did. This is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want in our first five games with difficult fixtures. We've already faced Spurs, Chelsea and Liverpool in our first five plus West Ham and Brentford as well in London derbies. I didn't want to be top of the table right now, man. I wanted a tough start. That's exactly what we've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the positions. <laughs> I've got a fetish for changing positions, I think. Honestly, man, it's ridiculous. How many have I done already this season? You know, I'm going to change the positions of Eze and Elise. Obviously, they're playmakers by trade in this Palace 4-3-3. If I'm going to get them game time, they need to be on the wing. They would be wasted sitting deeper in this 4-3-3. They need to be on the wing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Eze on the left-hand side, convert him to a left wing. That will only take him two weeks. I'm going to change Elise from CAM to right wing as well. He's a left-footed player, Elise, so that will fit him nicely on the right-hand side as an inside forward there. So that's going to be my aim now. Zahar is done. I'm going to have Eze starting as his replacement in this team. But three injuries already and just one win in our first five games. Tough start for Crystal Palace. So following game was the EFL Cup last 32 against Preston the lads from Deepdale coming and takes on a Selhurst Park in the cup um Terrible game. Finished 0 0. Preston did not take a shot in the entire match. It was like a training exercise, but unfortunately, I couldn't break them down. I scored a one goal I'd need to put us through. So, because of that, we went to a penalty shootout, as you know, in the FL Cup now. Uh, once again, finishes goalless or just a score draw after 90 minutes. It goes directly to a penalty shootout. No extra time. I did feel a completely weak inside for the game once again, and it went to spot kicks. Well, if you see me taking penalties, you will know. <laughs> Most people were back in Preston to win this penalty shootout. Out. I'd hit my first three though and scored all three of them. Preston missed their first but then scored their following two. And as Ebi Elway starts to take this one, we had a chance to possibly send us through if he could score, which he did. I couldn't believe it. I'd scored all four of my penalties and I mean, if Sam Johnston could pull off the heroics, make his second save from four, we would be going through to the last 16 of the EFL Cup. And we'd do so as well. Sam with the save, out foxes his man, and Crystal Palace are through on the shootout. And I am out of here, baby. I'm out of here. <laughs> I love the animation. It's so funny. It's so funny when you see one of the AI managers do it. Have you, have you seen Steve Bruce do it? It's hilarious when you see that. But even so, yeah, we win on the shootout. You won't see that many more times in this series. If we're talking about realism, 
<laughs> me me winning penalty shootouts is very unrealistic, but we did indeed win it 4-2, and that puts us through to the last 16 of the cup, so... There you go. Job done in the EFL Cup. We overcome Preston. And we've got Brighton, who are actually our fourth and final opponents today as well in the Premier League. This one in the EFL Cup, though, where the Amherst against Graham Potter side there. And a possible chance to progress to the quarterfinals of the EFL Cup. So I've got to say, now we've got a little bit further. Now we've got a Premier League side. I'm wondering, do I pick some starters for that game? Definitely thinking about it. A chance to get into Wembley in the first season would be amazing. Even so, yeah, fourth and final game of today's episode. Brighton and Hove Albion here at Selhurst Park. There's a rivalry between these two teams. It's a really strange rivalry. I've got to be honest here. There are there are a couple of strange rivalries in football where you just think, what's the logic behind that? This is one of them. Crystal Palace versus Brighton. But even so, I guess if you call it a rivalry, you can call it a rivalry. But of course, we know our main rival is going to be in South London in particular, but also London as well. But even so, take it on Brighton for the game. Um, really, really strange one this because there weren't that many clear-cut chances, but a couple of which were really good. We missed a sitter soon after the restart. And in Mikhail Ant Antonio really should have put Brighton in front in the second half. It was still 0-0. Looked as though the game was going to finish deadlocked. And it'll be our first clean sheet of the season in the Premier League. Here we have one chance to win it though in stoppage time. And we take it as well. Final kick of the game. Michael Elise on that right-hand side. Roll it across. And there is the former Celtic striker, Odson Eduard, for his second of this season. Yep, Crystal Palace won. Brighton nil. And we win it with the final kick of the game. Edouard, second of the campaign, wins it with the final kick. And what a relief as well, because to start the season off, it has been tough. Yes, we're through to the last 16 in the EFL Cup, but in the Premier League, we'd only won one of our first five, already a couple of big defeats. But here against Brighton, we win it with a final kick of the game through Edouard. First clean sheet of the season in the league as well. Big, big victory in a rival derby clash, if you want there. And we'll certainly take that one. Yep, just our second win in our first six Premier League games. Tough, tough start to the season. Three big injuries as well, but it's what I wanted. Very tough start, very good challenge, exactly what I was asking for. Why is that? It's it's very, very realistic indeed. We're not right now in a title race. Out of the blocks flying with five wins in six. Only two wins to start off with, but three injuries as well. Tough beginning to life at Selhurst Park, but... I'm happy with it. Really realistic start. And I'm very pleased to get our first clean sheet and a big win there against Brighton as well. But that wins this episode of the Realistic Summer Karima, guys. Big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, if you had done, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I will see you for the next episode of the Realistic Summer Karima mode very soon.